I just got finished watching a screening of Mortal Kombat. This is the evening of April 22nd, Thursday evening. It's supposed to premiere tomorrow in theaters and on HBO Max, I believe. And I, I believe from the moment that I saw the trailer, I indicated that I was or if I didn't mention this, I'm going to mention it now. I indicated that I was only superficially aware of the game, knew a little bit about it, recognized some of the character names, um, things like that. But I wasn't super into it. I was impressed by the trailer and I was looking forward to watching it. So when I got the invitation to try to get, you know, to attend a free virtual screening, I was like, oh, heck yes, I'll do that. So that's what I did. And the film, I have mixed feelings about this film. Maybe part of it relates to the fact that I'm not really a fan, so I don't know as much about these characters as, okay, that dude, I'm going to talk about him. I don't know as much about, as much about these characters as fans do. So there's a lot I don't understand, but you don't need to have a pre-existing knowledge uh, you know, in-depth knowledge of the game to appreciate the film for what it is. It was a fun enough action film. It had its issues, in my opinion. Uh, number one, I felt like it could have been and should have been longer. I feel like there were some characters that were introduced in here that uh, could have been fleshed out a little bit more. I felt like there was a, there were a lot of characters in here that were just kind of cram-packed and uh, it felt like maybe there was some stuff that was cut out because there was some fragmented type of stuff that, that would happen after the movie uh, went on for a certain amount of time. And uh, the, the fight scenes were okay. The special effects were pretty cool. The Sub-Zero guy, his effects were pretty, uh, were pretty cool. His powers were definitely... Uh, they were intimidating. I'll just say that much. They were intimidating. Am I having repeat pictures on here? I, I can't, I don't know. Uh, I just kind of grabbed these pictures real fast, cobbled them all together and threw them in the folder. So if they're not in, uh, if you're seeing duplicates, sorry about that. Uh, I feel like maybe I saw the movie poster twice, which that was an accident. If that's the case, I like these two guys. I can't remember their name. Luke Kang something. And the dude with the hat was was cool. I liked his hat. Uh, but in all honesty, I probably don't or won't have any desire to watch this again. It was fun for the time that I spent watching it. I'm glad I watched it, but it was okay. It didn't, it wasn't really something that was super impactful. Now I know it's like, okay, it's Mortal Kombat. Is it really supposed to be all that impactful? But in all honesty, some of the characters weren't very interesting. The most interesting character to me is, maybe he'll, he'll cycle around here at some point. The guy I said I wanted to talk about, Kano. That dude who played him stole the show. He was the best thing about this movie as far as I was concerned. And I recognized it uh, from... Pretty much from the moment he makes an entrance, I was like, oh, this guy, yeah, him, this guy, he was so funny. And he was ridiculous and over the top and horrible, but he was hilarious. And he was my favorite. The guy who played the main character, oh, uh, what's his name? John, um, shoot, I forget his name. I want to say Johnny Cage, but that's not right. Um, minor spoiler alert. Johnny Cage is teased at the end of this movie. He does not, I think it's Johnny Cage, what, whatever, a big, big, huge name guy. And oh, crap, hold on, I'm gonna have to look it up. Yes, Johnny Cage. I know that he's kind of a big name in the Mortal Kombat series. He is not in this movie. He is teased at the very end. There is no post credit scene, by the way. So when the credits roll, it's done. Um, the guy who played the main character, and I cannot remember his name now. He was kind of, uh, shoot, who did he, what was his name? I recognize his name, his character name, but I can't. 
he didn't make much of an impression on me, obviously. As you can tell, you know, you can tell who did. Kano was the one. He's the one whose name I remember the most. And of course, Sonya, because she's like the, the main girl in here. But the guy who played the main character, he was the only one out of all of them that got any sort of kind of... This guy right here. He was the only one that got any sort of... Um, not really backstory, but kind of, you know... Uh, sort of building him up as a character you get to know him the most out of all of them but the guy who played him I don't remember his name he he wasn't he was kind of vanilla y'all he wasn't super impressive uh so that kind of doesn't say great things when the main character in the film and he did he is represented as pretty much the main ish character even though there's so many characters in here, but he's still the main character. When he's kind of just meh, it's not that, you know, it's not that good for the film, in my opinion. Also, the character of Sonya, uh, she wasn't so great either. She was okay, but the problem with her character is, uh, I don't know how this goes in the game, but in the movie, the chosen ones or whatever they have this mark well she never has this mark until a certain point later in the film but before she gets this mark you mean to tell me she can actually beat the heck out of kano and get him down on the ground with a knife to his throat he must have been holding back because there's a scene where uh kano and sonya and the vanilla guy they're fighting this like a reptile lizard sort of creature and all three of them are fighting against it and only one of them is the one that's able to defeat it and that's the one that Sonya was able to kick his butt down to the ground i just kind of didn't f i mean yeah that's a little spoilery sorry about that i'll try to i'll try to remember to put a little thing in the in the video but i just kind of found that not very believable plus she didn't really have the physique that convinced me she's a badass fighter I mean, I just could she her, she didn't have a lot of definition or or bulk in her arms. She didn't look very toned. She uh, just she just looked average. She didn't look like she's somebody that put a lot of effort into honing and toning her body to be this masterful fighter or whatever. And I mean, she, her character was supposed to be a, a like a special forces soldier. So yeah, she's supposed to be badass, but. I don't know just it didn't it, it didn't really convince me very much but anyway whatever i mean it it's okay i mean this is not the worst film i've ever seen and it was like this scene right here hmm, i don't know but what i was saying is it's not the worst film i've ever seen and it was a fun way to pass the time and i'm glad i got to watch it i did like the score you know that Mortal Kombat music, dun, 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 that one. They played that a little bit through here. The guy who played Scorpion, uh, I can't remember what his name was before, Hanzo something, it shows him at the very beginning. The opening scene is pretty good. Very, um, it's pretty grabby and very well done. And that character, of course, anybody who knows this game and the the lore and everything they know that he's the one who becomes scorpion i did not realize that his character was a bad guy originally and then they kind of they had this guy scorpion and then the other dude uh, sub-zero on the right i didn't realize until recently that his character had originally been a bad guy then they kind of made him more of a good slash anti-hero-ish guy he is not presented as a bad guy at all in this film i don't i, I that probably won't be a surprise to anybody who knows anything about the game but he's not in here a huge amount he's in here in the beginning he has little quick flash moments throughout but just like quick like that and then he shows up at the end and uh also something that was kind of funny about this movie was when they would have a fight and there would be a defeat they would the character that that defeated the person would make this would, would say this line or utter these words that it seemed like it was something that was straight out of the video game 
In fact, when they would get ready to line up and start fight or, you know, face each other and start fighting, I have expected them to be standing there doing that, you know, that video game motion that they do when they're ready to fight. <laughs> they didn't do that, but that's what it made me think of. Also, the gore in here wasn't as bad as I expected that it might be. There were a couple of moments, one in particular that was really gnarly, and I was like, I, you know, did the, but was laughing at the same time because it was so over the top. It was just funny to me. There were some scenes where I did laugh out loud. And I believe that those were scenes actually that involved Kano because he was the best part about this movie as far as I'm concerned. But I feel like that, well, no, honestly, I don't know how fans of the of the game series will feel about it. I don't know if there's going to be hardcore fans that will be super disappointed in what they see or hold on a second. Or if they're going to love it because they're just fans of the game and they're going to love any sort of on-screen representation. Now, I I think that the live action movies from the 90s and I, I understand Annihilation is particularly bad. I have not seen that. I, maybe I saw the first one a long, long time ago, but I couldn't tell you now anything about it except I just remember the girl who was in it as Sonya, I guess. I remember her because I knew who she was. She played in um, oh, Last Action Hero and she used to be like Miss Teen USA or whatever, uh, but you know, I, I'm just not super deep into this, but there's definitely uh, gore to be found, but not quite as much as you would expect given a mortal, given that it's a Mortal Kombat movie. So uh, anyway, I don't know. I honestly don't know what fans of the series are going to think about it. Uh, like I said, maybe they're going to be, I, I'm curious to see what the audience score is going to be on this. I did see IMDb scores on it, which do reflect audience scores. And right now it's at a seven, which I think that's what I would rate it. I personally would probably rate it a 6.5 to seven. Um, but the official critic scores, of course, they're not, they're not super fun of this film, which that doesn't really surprise me, but I'm curious to see what the regular folks are going to think about it when those scores start to pop up on Rotten Tomatoes. I'll, I'll be checking that out and seeing what they think and, and checking out what people say about it, what they think about it, you know, if, if they're super disappointed, if they're satisfied, if they absolutely loved it. I kind of don't feel like people are going to absolutely love this thing like crazy, but a lot of people loved Godzilla vs. Kong like crazy, and I didn't think it was as great as people were making it out to be. But who knows? I guess we'll find out. Anyway, that's kind of my long-winded, long-ass-ish review of this film. Uh, as somebody who's a complete novice to this, doesn't really know much about it beyond just some names and that it's about fighting and all this stuff. And uh, yeah, I can't think of really anything else to to comment on with regard to it and maybe I'll remember something when I'm done but uh you know whatever I can always put it in the video when I'm editing it so okay well whenever you guys get around to checking out this movie let me know what you think if you were a super fan of this of this series were you disappointed were you happy were you just content anyway curious to find out be curious to hear what my brother thinks about it so because I know he really, or he, he really loves this series. And uh, yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. I'm going to go for now, you guys. Later. <laughs>